This is Bitcoin. You might have heard of it. On a four hour chart. Not my favorite setup, but honestly, the money, you can't complain with quick money. And you can usually get a substantial move on a four hour chart I found. One hour, nah, not for ET. I, if four hour is like, if my play is not showing correctly on a four hour, like let's just say I'm thinking down, but the four hour is saying up. I mean, do you want to suffer for, you know, three to seven days? I don't. So I'd rather just wait. Okay. So we're fine. I mean, I've been stalking this play for quite some time now. I would say probably since the beginning of last week. And my position hasn't, I mean, this red line hasn't moved. I've had to fuck with this box a little bit. I need to learn how to draw an infinity long box. I like the boxes because they just help me just focus better. And so where does this box come from? It's an, uh, a big red here on the imbalances. And one thing that I would like for anyone who has input on this, please comment and we could learn on this together. But I just like how this has a big gap in between here and here. And so if it does flip this, then like, I don't know, from what I've seen, that means it might just get a hard on and go up there. So at the end of the day, that's not a bad short because you've got to throw a hedge down, of course. I will do a video on spread options. It's very important. And if you're wrong, then you just ride that hedge play and you should get a great move, like rocket. And so these are the kind of shorts that you want to find. And to be honest, the four hour FVG has really worked for me. I don't know if anyone else wants to comment below. I know that they always get filled, but just for my lifestyle and going to work, I like the four hour. And this is just such a clean chart. And... These charts are getting cleaner because I just make less and less of them. Because if they're better plays, you don't have to make as many. And this is just one... I mean, I've waited quite some time here. I mean, you see this. You see this. That would have been, a, I mean, a decent play, but it wasn't convincing. I, oh, no. I mean, off the retest on a better chart. But, I mean, the fact that it didn't have this measured move... This is one thing I, like, I would like to let bulls know. Because I, I only trade down. But like, if I see a bear, like what I presume to be a bear flag, this indicator is all right, but it just, it, for me, a bear flag is more of a continuation pattern. Uh, it'll show it as a bear flag. And if you've already had six bear flags in a row, I mean, oh, well, no, that's not what I was trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, is like, I would not consider this as a proper bear flag. I like it. It might play out like one, but I've been burned on way too many of those because that could be. Um, the right shoulder and actually you can see a little inverse head and shoulders action going on but again you know what's more important to me is that like we didn't even okay maybe i exaggerated that measured move let's just say it's this measured move here oh man oh come on keep it together et you can do it today it's a saturday i'm in a good mood if you guys could tell um you know i mean i don't know yeah, it, it was supposed to hit my green line right there. And that's what threw me off about this trade. But these are always the best shorts. Because you just got to react to the moment. I mean, there's probably some sort of divergence on the RSI. Yeah, see that lower low here, but these are relatively flat. That's kind of give that was a giveaway. I mean, with everything considered, I mean, how long did you have a chance to short it? I mean, it, the, your day's got to come to an end at some point. And whenever this happens, it usually sets into like some sort of like head and shoulders type of formation. In crypto, I think it's hilarious. They're just types of formations. It's not a perfect head and shoulders. They're ugly. But like, I mean, it has a low here, a lower one here, and a higher one here. That is the basic formation of a head and shoulders pattern. Now, as you can see, my green line is here down at this blue. Because it did pump off of this really good. And to be honest, with all this Celsius stuff, I'll just move this line just a little lower. I, I just like to catch the bottoms of these because if you have about seven or eight charts working and you have these lines set, and I always have the alert, and pay for the subscription. I really think you should. Um, it just saves you a lot of time. And like, if you do this on a four-hour job, you can like, I mean, you can work a day job and still be able to trade. If you ask me. I mean, honestly, all you got to do is just, oh, my phone texted me. Sorry, I have to go into my phone and buy something. Oh, my phone texted me. Now I'm going to go in and sell it. Same thing as your stupid snotty nosed kids. You know, they got sick at school. So honestly, if my boss wants to complain, I'll just tell him that, uh, you know, I mean, I don't have kids, so it doesn't count. <laughs>
Because that's, that's the importance of this. And honestly, I found it the best. People who day trade all the time, I mean, honestly, it's just no way to live. I think, it's, I think that uh, having a good career is important. But the point of that is, is that if you set alerts on a four-hour chart and you use these imbalances, you're going to be in a good start here. Um, the RSI, I really don't want to use the RSI today because the data, let's see. Well, let's just take a look. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was the setup I had before. So basically all I was looking for here was, uh, I, I study the RSI essentially independently of the price. I study them both independently before I study them together. And so your mid range here, the Carmelo Anthony, I mean, that's dead mid range. So you need something. We're seeing signs of like rejection here. Okay. So you know maybe up here would be a level you'd want to look. This was a good short. Again, didn't hit didn't hit my target. So I'm gonna erase this now. I'm gonna keep you guys updated because these trades, that's what I love about these trades. They're like little uh clips of my life. Like, oh man, those weeks where I was following this Bitcoin short. Like I I followed these things for a long time. Oh, my VNQ short, uh, the real estate short, real estate index short. I waited like a 16 months. Oh, so I stock these things down and, uh, I'm, I'm not even quite sure. I've had a lot going on of what this, I think this might've been on a, like a lower time frame. So I'll just reevaluate this really quickly. What you want to see is a proper bearish divergence, of course. And geez, I just have a lot of stuff marked up here. And one thing that's going to make this a very interesting trade is this rip, this uh, EMA ribbon here. Uh, that's on a one hour chart. I've noticed that these are pretty substantial here. I mean, look at that. Is it a coincidence that was a perfect rejection off? I think we flip it. Now, do we, the question is, is do we flip it and get faked out and come back here? Or do we just pump it? That's, I mean, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Monkey pox. <clears throat> Anyways, if it flips it, I don't really see the big deal about that because you can make money either way. It's called a spread. I, I encourage you all to learn how to do it. Well, like, let's just say this is the stock market and this is Apple stock. I'm buying like two month out shorts right here, big shorts, $700 shorts, one at a time, averaging it as I see. But I'm also throwing out like $125 calls for like the next Friday right up here. And so... That's why it's so important to play these gaps. I, I don't know if any of this is true. This is, it works though. I'll pro, I pro, <laughs> it's made me, it's made me much better. I will say that it has really elevated my game to the next level because if I am going to be wrong, I'd rather be really wrong so I can let the hedge work. I don't want to be kind to wrong. I want to let that hedge work if I'm wrong. So at least I can get back to break even or God forbid run up more. And then when you see that hedge ran up like 300%, I mean, you got to be a moron not to try that short again and try to catch this level. These shorts don't come around often. And honestly, I don't even think the, the thing that really worries me is, is I think we might get here. Think about it. That ribbon's going to be right there the moment that this happens. So this may be more of a scalper being ready for a monster trade here. I'm just seeing a little bearish movement right now. And if I move to the one hour chart, this is something that I learned from uh, Playboy. He's the best, dude. Robbie 4 c Great people. I encourage anyone, dude. At least follow him on Twitter if you know what's best for you. Um, they really know the most, man. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna front. They're the best. And uh, what I've learned from them recently is that change of structure. Lower, low, high. Lower, higher, low, higher, high. Higher, low, higher, high. Higher, low, higher, high. Higher, low, higher, high. Lower, low. Now do we get a lower high? And maybe we just get rejected off of here. Again, these are all scenarios. I could go on for days, but this is a good pattern. And I would just encourage you all to take a look at this for yourself. And if you see something different, let me know. I'm out.